a few months back, I made a video specifically tailored to short people such as myself. I'm five foot six and I have a 30 inch inseam. And I pretty much ride any kind of bike I want. And so whenever I created that video, it got a lot of hits and I think it helped out a lot of people based on the comments I received. So this is video number two on how to ride sport bikes such as a Yamaha R6. The Yamaha R6 has a 33.7 inch seat. Meanwhile, as you know, my inseam is only 30 inches. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get on the bike, how to get off the bike, how to put up the kickstand, and generally become more comfortable riding a bike that is taller. So in the last video that I created, there was a lot of debate in the comment section whether you should get a motorcycle that is fitted to your height and your stature and your inseam, or you should just adapt. So there was a lot of back and forth going on there, but I do have a couple of my own opinions. Here's the challenge. For a lot of people, you really can't get a motorcycle to tailor your height and your stature and your inseam. So the best thing to do is to learn new skills and adapt and ride any motorcycle you want because honestly, I've seen people who are a lot shorter than I am that can ride motorcycles like this. It's all about skill at the end of the day. So if you're the type of person that's been holding off buying something like this or equivalent to this, uh, I would highly suggest that you do a couple of things that were talked about in my previous video and obviously in this video. So with that said, I'm gonna show you guys how to hop on the motorcycle. We're gonna ride around different places, riding on uneven surfaces, riding slow, riding fast. So by the time you're done with this uh, video, you should feel a lot more confident. All right, so by now, I really hope that you've watched my other video, but if you haven't, highly recommend that you go watch that one. In the same way that I showed you how to get on and off on that bike, I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this bike. The caveat being, that this motorcycle has an extra inch over the other one and the other thing is that the seat on this motorcycle is a lot wider so even though this is a 33.7 inch seat the seat is wider and that basically decreases your inseam height so how do you gain an extra two to three inches of inseam height by sitting on this motorcycle let me show you how so when you get on the bike, obviously toss the leg over it, put both hands on the handlebar, and bring the bike upright to the center. Now that the bike is on a center, you still have one foot on the ground and the bike is leaned a little bit towards the left. If you have a 30 inch inseam like I do, and you're riding a motorcycle that's about 32 inches, you can pretty much bring it to the center, but considering that this motorcycle is a little bit taller, uh, you're gonna be leaned a little bit to the left, and that's totally okay. So, now you need to get the kickstand out of the way, and so, as, as you can see, my leg is kinda dang dangling on the right. Put this leg to the, l to the right, you're gonna tippy toe, and then kick the kickstand up. Now put your left foot and flat foot it, and the reason why I can flat foot on the left side is because I moved my butt to the left side and I have my right foot on the brake. Now generally speaking, when you're riding a motorcycle, your right foot is always going to be on the brakes, on the rear brake when you're stopped at a light. There are a lot of people that put the bike in neutral. Not only is that unsafe because if there's a car coming behind you really quickly, you don't have a lot of time to react to that. So. Uh, there could potentially be uh, an accident that you might get into and um, for stability purposes if you're on a hill inclining or declining it can also be an issue so now you want to start the motorcycle up all you got to do there we go so as you can see my left foot is on the floor and my right foot is on the rear brakes so being a short statured person on a tall bike it's nerve-wracking whenever you're going slow. When you're going fast, 10, 15, 20 miles an hour and up, when I say fast, that's what I'm talking about. But slow speed maneuvers are the, the most difficult things that you can do. So in this type of situation, turn to the direction you wanna go. I wanna make a left turn here. And obviously look behind you and give it some gas and take off. And now I'm gonna do a U-turn and I'm gonna come back and show you guys how I stop. One major way to become really, really confident in your riding style is vision, because where you look is where you travel. 
If you're looking at the wrong place when you're riding your motorcycle, it's going to reflect on your handlebars. Your handlebars are going to get jerky and you're not going to make a decision on where you want to go. So always, just before you take off, make a decision on the entrance ramp that you're going to go into. Make a decision on which lane that you're going to be in. The, all these things are very, very critical for anyone who's riding a motorcycle, but especially for short people, because if there's an incline or a decline, or, or or a rough patch that you're going to go over especially at slow speeds it can be uh it can be nerve-wracking all right this time i'm going to make a right turn and come back around okay looking all the way to the right this time i'm going to use my rear brake to slow down provides a little bit more stability left foot flat footed as you can see I'm gonna turn off the motorcycle put my right foot down first scooching my butt to the right now I'm flat footed on the right putting the kickstand down with my left foot might take more than one try because this kickstand is really weird okay there it is make sure it's fully down and then put the bike towards its side and that's how you get on the motorcycle take off put the kickstand down so now i'm going to show you what i look like from the side so you can see for yourself how comfortable you can be if you buy something like this how close to the tank you are uh, how you're positioned etc etc this is what i look like all right, I'm going to go slow here so you can see. And here's what I look like from behind. Hopefully that's clear enough. From behind, hopefully you can see this. Turning off the ignition, putting my right foot down. Putting down the kickstand with my left foot. Looking if the kickstand is 100% down. Yes, it is. Putting the bike down to its side, hopping off the bike, and that's it. So now, now that you see me get on the bike, get off the bike, put the kickstand up, etc., etc. Now I think it's time for us to take it on the road, find some uneven surfaces. Uh, maybe I'll find like a gas station, go up the entrance, maybe find like an incline, etc., etc. So let's see if I can demonstrate some of that for you guys, because that's where a lot of people have uh, the difficulty when they're riding a motorcycle. Any motorcycle, it doesn't have to be an R6. All right, so before we take off, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about panic braking and also trail braking. And trail braking is normally talked about whenever you're racing at the racetrack or going around uh, very fast corners but all trail braking is is trailing off the brakes meaning you're gonna slowly give brakes with two fingers or one finger sometimes I do it with one sometimes I do it with two depending on how much speed I'm carrying and the type of motorcycle I'm riding but you're you're gonna go very slowly pressing the brake lever and then you're gonna let it go when you're fully stopped you won't let it go like right away you're gonna let it go very slowly so that's basically trailing off the brake now a lot of people when they're getting on the motorcycle for the first time especially if it's a new motorcycle that they've never been on they give it a handful of brake and then they immediately let go and that can unsettle the bike so as a short person if a bike is unsettled and you don't have both feet on the ground, guess what's going to happen? Especially if you're going to pull the, a brake lever and the wheel is turned a little bit to the right or to the left, we all know what's going to happen. The bike is going to go down, especially if you're looking down with it as well. So never ever look down when you're riding a motorcycle because wherever you look, that's where you actually end up. So if you're enjoying the video so far and you found it to be helpful, Give the video a like, please, and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. These kind of videos are things that I really enjoy doing because it helps out a lot of people. Uh, I may be uh, creating a lot of videos that are reviewing motorcycles, but I really, really enjoy teaching people what I know because I learned from the internet just like you are today. So uh, please give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it and share it with whoever 
that might need this. So the other advice I have for you is maybe once a week doing parking lot maneuvers. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy. You don't have to spend a lot of time doing it because if you're by yourself, it does get sort of boring. You don't have to do this forever, but uh, you see these cones here? You can use these cones. Now, I don't think anybody's here, but you can use them to weave in and out. Mostly what you should be doing is doing some really tight turns because that's what's gonna help you become a lot more comfortable riding a motorcycle. So use something like this thing here. I don't know what this thing is, but use it as an example. Go around this thing and make your turn as tight as possible. Look to the direction you wanna go to and keep going like this. Keep doing this and make the turn tighter and tighter. And then, you know, repeat it, go the other way as well. And I see a lot of these surfaces are uneven. And on uneven surfaces, like there's a little bump over here, you need to carry some speed. If you're going too slow on uneven surfaces, that's when you end up getting in trouble. So carry some speed. I'm doing about 12 miles an hour. That's pretty doable. All right, I think now it's time for us to get on the road. And I think I'm gonna need some gas soon so uh, we can practice at a gas station and I can show you guys how to enter the gas station ramp, um, how to get off, how to merge back into traffic, etc., etc. And while I'm at it, here's some good practice for you guys. Anytime you see a curb, just like this one, and you want to pull over, very slowly stop and park as close to it as you can. And now you can keep your bike upright and keep both feet on the ground like I have. So this foot is on the curb and this foot is kind of tippy-toeing. So now the bike is upright and I can take my gloves off and switch off the GoPro until we get to our next location. Three hours later. All right, so just got to the local shopping center near me. And uh, I thought I'd bring you guys here and talk a little bit more about trail braking because I think that's a very, very important subject for people who are not that tall because we just don't have a lot of, uh, lot of height to work with. So panic situations are an issue right now. I am trail braking, if you can see, slowing down very, very slow. I'm just using my idle speed at the moment. I'm not even using the gas, but I'm using my foot brake to slow down. But at all times, when you're in a parking lot situation, make sure that your butt is a little bit towards the left. So as soon as you're getting into the parking lot, always be aware of which location your booty is in. <laughs> make sure it's always towards the left and make sure that you're using your rear brake more than you are your front brake when you're very, very slow. Because your front brake, as soon as you use it, watch what happens. This is what happens. But when you're using your rear brake, it doesn't happen at all. This, I'm using 100% of my rear brake right now and watch what happens. You see? slowing down gradually, trailing slowly as I'm using the brakes, even at full pressure. So now here's a, an example of going down a hill. On the camera, it might not show it, but on, on a downhill, I'm using my rear brakes right now. Most people use 100% of the front brakes, but you gotta get used to using the rear brakes as well. And I don't think this only applies to people who are short, but just in general. All right, let's go this way because I think this is gonna be a really good example. Now I just made a turn right now into a bank turn that had a little bit of a hill, but now we're gonna be making a left turn uh, into another hill that is kind of sketchy. So I just went up the hill, now I'm going down a hill. And here's some uneven surfaces, but I'm gonna increase my speed. I know, it sound, I know it might sound counterproductive. The faster you go on uneven surfaces, the more in control you're gonna be. These kind of places, the parking lots are perfect to practice in. Just make sure you have uh, some frame sliders on. Because if you do make a mistake, and you will, you will go down. Always look on the left, on the right, even behind you to see if there's anybody coming and make sure that you never ever panic break because if you panic break remember what we talked about you give it a handful and then you're gonna look down it's gonna happen and your bike is gonna go down with it so right now I'm doing about four miles an hour three miles an hour I'm just going along my way 
is not an issue, but I know exactly what my surroundings are looking like. I just passed a car over there. There's a car coming towards me on the left-hand side over here. Uh, there's uneven surfaces. There's a little crack on the road over here. I could even go in the center of that crack road, but it's not going to affect me because I'm carrying enough speed. And then I'm going to put some gas in my bike. Not now, but just to give you guys an example. And then get on our way in between these cars onto another hill going down so this is where it gets really really tricky because as you can see my left foot is all the way planted down but this is a hill going down here and there's a turn so make sure you're looking towards the back give yourself a little bit of gas and then merge in with the traffic uh, quite honestly uh, I, I wouldn't pass off riding an amazing motorcycle such as an R6 or any sport bike for that matter. Uh, the R6 is a 33.7 inch seat height motorcycle, but the ZX6R, its competitor, which still exists, the R6 doesn't, surprisingly, is gonna be a shorter seat height. It's gonna be 32.7. So if you still want a more comfortable bike, that is the comfortable bike to get. But uh, don't purchase just because it has a low seat height. Uh, I would not suggest that at all. Buy any bike you want. Just learn the necessary skills. And that's pretty much it. So uh, give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel. And check out my merch website if you want to support me. That's going to be petropowered.co. Alright boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen. I will catch you guys on the next episode. Ciao for now.